If you've been with me on this channel for a little while, then you know that I've been conducting a series of interviews with veteran leadership and executive coaches. I've been having these long form interviews to give you a lot of insight into the world of leadership and executive coaching and to give you ideas on how you can be a more effective coach and have a more successful practice. In this clip, I've taken a selected question and answer from one of the past interviews to give you an opportunity to reinforce an existing point if you've already watched the whole interview or to give you an opportunity to just learn a little bit from this executive coach. If you like this question and answer and you haven't watched the whole interview, I highly recommend that you find it on this channel and do so. When you work with a leader, how much of what you do is coaching versus consulting or advising? True confession. <laughs> advising is incredibly tempting, in, especially because I work with people in the same field that I've had 20 plus years of experience. And I do know some things that they might want to know. I have had experiences that they might find interesting, but I think it is Michael Bungay Stanier who said, your advice isn't half as good as you think it is. That's usually the truth. He's an author of The Coaching Habit and has helped me to get real about that. So the power of coaching really is in asking questions and, and doing it the way we, we learned with the ICF standards. However, People do ask for advice. They ask for you to help them choose. And the simple method that I've found helpful to avoid going there right away is to essentially exhaust them <laughs> by making them tell me, what else can you do? What else could you do? Or just say, what else? And although it can be frustrating for the client, they get it that. I'm not going to give them an answer. Sometimes I do say, if I gave you advice, you wouldn't want it or you wouldn't take it. But I don't even know if that's true. So it's not what I usually say. It's typically that I think you have the answer and you know more about, more about this than I do. So it's a percentage. It's probably 10% of the conversation after we've gone there that we'll come back around and I'll say a few thoughts I have are these and take them or leave them. <laughs> right. Excellent. I Now, I think that's good advice for coaches, this idea of exhausting your client, because I, I have seen at times and uh, I, I perform as a mentor coach as well as a coach. And so I observe coaching sessions. And of course, I'm also reflective of my own coaching sessions. And I must admit that there are times where I don't exhaust my client that I could ask what else one more time rather than accept that this is enough and uh, we can move on or choose one of the ideas that they've come up with. So I, I, I really like that idea, Ken, of, of asking them more and more to come up because then what else is the value of executive coaching but to push our client to go beyond their comfort zone in terms of their own creative uh, ability to solve these challenges or at least come up with ideas on, on how to resolve these challenges. Yeah, that's the magic. And that's what made me so excited when I first got a coach. In fact, I recently said to my coach, I love you. <laughs> and my I love you was that he just made me find the answer to something, an intractable problem that I came with simply asking, what would you do? And he wouldn't tell me. But I got to the end, knew what to do, and, and just did feel something like love at that moment. Yeah. And an immense sense of relief, too, because I, I, I've seen that in clients when they actually come in not knowing and leave knowing and feel a heck of a lot better yeah. after, after that time. And, that, and that's why sometimes coaching is the best hour of the day. Mm -hmm.